So there's basically a burgeoning ideological civil war, you could call it, or ideological tussle within the right between Conservative Inc., the mainstream right, and the dissident right. And this has come to the fore over the past couple of weeks or so with these young dissident right individuals, their detractors would call them white supremacists, they would argue that showing up and crashing TPUSA events and airing their grievances, in one case with a guy called Nick Fuentes being kicked out of one of these events and not having his free speech respected, which they claim is a giant hypocrisy because, of course, Conservative Inc. is supposed to be all about free speech, especially on college campuses. What are their grievances? The fact that Conservative Inc. shows massive support for waves of legal immigration and indeed has actually influenced Trump with his last State of the Union saying we need more legal immigrants than ever, despite the fact that the stats show 75% of those legal immigrants vote Democrat anyway, so by supporting massive waves of legal immigration, Conservative Inc. seems to be signing the death warrant for the Republican Party, and indeed for Donald Trump in a more short-term sense. We also have this idea, and this is what's been challenged when these, quote, saboteurs invade these TPUSA events, that these migrants are coming in and, you know, starting businesses, hiring Americans. They're not doing that. The stats show they're working for giant soul-sucking corporations like Walmart. They're really not adding much to the culture or indeed to the economy. And again, 75% of them vote Democrat. These are the questions that are being asked at these TPUSA events. And I've met Charlie Kirk. He's a nice guy. This is not an attack on Charlie Kirk, but this needs to be addressed because people want me to talk about it. You have these young conservative, you could call them more fringe right individuals showing up, asking these questions to the point where last night in Ohio, they dominated like eight out of the 10 questions and they're promising a gripe war to go out to all these events with Steven Crowder, Ben Shapiro, Charlie Kirk, and just bombard them with these same grievances. And it's because they're either refusing to allow them into the debates, to, to the Q&As, or just giving them false answers to the questions, or not even addressing the questions, that this has snowballed. There are other grievances with Israel, of course, the far right has this bizarre fetish with blaming Israel and Jews for everything, which I've never subscribed to and don't. But then mainstream conservatives, Conservative Inc. also has a fetish with constantly genuflecting and prostrating themselves to Israel. Even when we literally had a few weeks ago the story that Israel had spy devices on the White House lawn eavesdropping on the Trump administration. And in fact, last night during this fracas, you could call it, Charlie Kirk was asked... Would he support a policy that benefited America to the detriment of Israel? And his answer was basically, I love Israel. That's one of their grievances. This is why this is bubbling up, because it's not being addressed why a lot of conservative ink seems to place Israel before the United States of America in many aspects. Their other gripe is that conservative ink increasingly appears to be shifting left and adopting positions that progressives stood for 10 years ago, especially with the whole degeneracy LGBT angle. Like, how many selfies with drag queens do you need at this point? How far do you shift left? How far do we allow the Overton window to shift left before we draw a line in the sand? Where does it stop? You have people like David French, so-called conservative, saying that drag queen story time is one of the blessings of liberty. Like, how far are we going to shift left before we try and pull things back in the other direction? So those are their gripes. That's why these confrontations are happening at all these conservative ink conferences. That's why people like Nick Fuentes are becoming increasingly popular amongst young people. Again, I don't subscribe to many of his beliefs, but I can recognize who is coming up in the culture who is resonating with more people. And he is a guy who is energetic on camera, he's funny, he's got a growing audience of very young people. So whether or not freezing him out of the debate entirely is really going to work in favour of actually challenging what you would say are his bad ideas, I'm not sure at this point, because the optics appear to be starting to shift, whereby these fringe right Nickers, as they call them, these Nick Fuentes fans, are asking these questions about 
immigration, about Israel, about degeneracy, you know, the culture war, and the answers that they're getting, if they get answers at all, are just not satisfactory. They're being brushed off. They're being laughed at. They're being shouted down and calling racist. It's not great optics to just shout racist at some 20-year-old kid in a MAGA hat. You're using the left's tactics against your own people, basically. And again, even if you disagree with them, merely to call them saboteurs or trolls, which they very well may be, doesn't seem to be having the effect of extinguishing their ideas because their numbers only seem to be growing. And it is true that there is a, a cult of gatekeeping within conservative ink, within traditional right-wing conservative media. There's the Ben Shapiro Club, there's the Fox News Club. If you go against any of those people in either of those two clubs, you are blacklisted, you are kept out of the debate. Again, I've never been invited on Fox News in my entire life. Then you have TPUK, which again is a completely different organization. And again, I'm not attacking either of those organizations. I know many good people within them, including Charlie Kirk, who I've met on many occasions and seems to be a very nice, genuine guy. But there are people within the leadership of those organizations who are in it to ingratiate themselves with the establishment and further their own careers. And that's it. They don't care about changing anything. They're conservatives. They don't care about conserving anything. It's all about them to the point where the TPUK organization, which Kirk helped launch, I don't think he's in control of it anymore, literally has a shit list of people who they can't affiliate with or associate with. Guess who's number one on that shit list? Yours truly. Even though I literally never even tried to help them, never even tried to be a part of it, and I'm glad I didn't because it became cringe as fuck in a hurry. But again, it's full of people in the leadership positions in the TPUK case, who just want to ingratiate themselves with the Tory establishment. They want to make a career out of it. They don't want to change anything. They don't want to have an impact. They just want to get ahead to the detriment of anyone else. And their optics cooks to a great degree. They think that I'm like this big fringe, right-wing, dangerous radical when I make funny YouTube videos, and that's about it. They're that paranoid about me, which just shows how truly spineless and cringe they really are. The other aspect of this was there's a YouTuber called Hunter Avalone who came out with this bizarre video saying conservatives aren't being censored despite the fact that his own channel got deleted. It came back, but it got deleted arbitrarily for no reason whatsoever. You know, I've been banned, Alex Jones has been banned, Luma, Yiannopoulos, the list goes on and on. They literally wipe us out from search engine results. They literally change search engine results on the day of referendums and elections to sabotage conservative candidates and causes like the Irish referendum on abortion. So yes, obviously widespread censorship of conservatives is taking place. We've proven that in tripl triplicate to claim that's not going on is incredibly dumb. Also, you know, he attacked Fuentes and basically got owned in the comments by thousands of people. Attacking someone with 10 times less subscribers than you on YouTube is a little bit stupid little bit stupid, but again, it showed the kind of insecurity that is evident within Conservative Inc. that they feel now they need to lash out and attack these people, call them racists, when on the other side, their audiences are growing. And again, they do that because they think by attacking the people who are seen as more fringe, that gives them a layer of protection. It's like, oh, we're not that bad. We're not those guys. When in fact, once you remove that layer of protection, then you're the next person to be banned. So those, those are my thoughts on Conservative Inc. versus the dissident right. I might make a YouTube video about this in the next week or so. We'll see. But let me know what you think in the thread. I'm going to be in Hungary next week in Budapest. And then the week after that, I will be in Poland for the big anniversary celebrations. Paul Joseph Watson, summit.news.